Good evening, everybody. I am Drew Carter from the Office of Admission. I am so excited that you are all here today. Um, you've probably heard me say it before, but I'll say it one more time. Congratulations on being accepted. This was a most competitive year uh, in the admission process, and you should be very proud. Uh, I'm excited to, to welcome you to tonight's study abroad webinar. Uh, I'm excited to, to introduce you to our panelists, and I'm excited for you to hear some of their stories. Um, a few housekeeping notes. Uh, closed captioning is available. You can select that button down at the bottom of your screen if you'd like. Um, please put questions in the Q&A. We have two study abroad staff members behind the scenes answering uh, questions for you about study abroad. I will also feed some questions from the Q&A to our panelists. Uh, we also have an admissions staff person behind the scenes answering, answering any admissions questions you might have. So uh, we would love for this to be interactive. So please feed us all your questions. Um, Without further ado, let's get right to it. I'm gonna introduce Britt Smith, who's the director of Study Abroad, and I'm gonna have him give an overview of the Study Abroad program. Um, I can't wait for you to hear all about it. Britt? Hey, I'm Professor Britton Smith, and director of Study Abroad at the College of the Holy Cross. I've been here 17 years. I love the place. I can also say uh, that Drew actually told me uh, independently that this was uh, one of the strongest classes they've had at Holy Cross, so congratulations. Um, the first thing I want to do is answer two questions. Why should you study abroad and why should you study abroad at Holy Cross? The first one is studying abroad, education in general is about transformation. It changes who you are uh, and nothing, I repeat, nothing will change and transform you uh, in your four years of college like a study abroad experience. So uh, it also helps that studies have shown that those people who study abroad actually earn higher salaries. But we don't care about that. We care about the educational experience, right? So, but it is true. It, it, does, it, it does prepare you for life in ways that, that create success. So I'm gonna let the students tell you about how it changed them. So I'll go, why Holy Cross? Why should you study abroad from Holy Cross? Well, we concentrate on the academic side of Holy Cross. If you want to uh, tour Europe, as some of the students said, you can, you can do that, but you can do it a lot cheaper if you're not paying tuition. We believe that study abroad is first and foremost an academic experience. You satisfy requirements towards graduation. You fulfill credits towards your majors and minors and common area requirements. It is different from just taking a tour. It's academic and that's important. Second reason is, we have relationships with programs of partner institutions that go back um, over 30 years. Uh, we have people on the ground that can take care of your student, our students or your student if something goes wrong. They care about Holy Cross, they care about our students because our students have been there year after year after year and our students are good and they make good impressions year after year. Uh, so, we, again, this personal aspect that, that we have with students. The other thing is we concentrate, and this is gonna seem strange to you, maybe at first, and maybe you saw it in the video, we concentrate on a full year, academic year of study abroad, because that's the way you truly get immersed in a culture. Now, people think that we live in a global world. So the way you get to be globalized is to see as much of the globe as you possibly can. But guess what? That's not the way you become a global citizen. The way you become a global citizen is to be local, a truly local and at home in a place that wasn't yours by birthright. And that usually doesn't happen in a semester. I'm not saying you can't go abroad for a semester, but we have this added experience. And I know no one who went abroad for the year, who wished uh, she'd gone abroad for the, for the semester. So it works, the proof is in the pudding, happens year after year. Um, there's one other, one other aspect of Holy Cross study abroad that I'd like to emphasize, and that is we are really big on language learning. Now students all think that they're no good at languages, but you know what? It's because they've had lousy high school teachers uh, who in teaching language. It's a fact. Your teachers are not good in high school for the most part. If you had a good one, you're really, really lucky. So you'll come to Holy Cross and you'll get good instruction in languages uh, and you will be able 
try to take language in your first in your first year if you're starting out. If you do that, you can start out in a language in your first year and end up going to France or Germany or Japan or wherever and actually take courses at real French and German and Spanish and Peruvian universities alongside Peruvians. It sounds crazy, but it's amazing. And it's a real gift in this globalized world to have that facility with the language. Um, I want to talk, uh, we do have a, a program that we call the May Masters. We're fudging it a little bit. They start in May and end uh, mid-May and ended mid-June. Uh, but it sounds like you're going to get all your summer and so you can still get a job and go on one of these. Uh, it's, it, they're great. We don't see them as an as, as, as a alternative to the academic year programs, but as a way to get your foot wet. So uh, they're faculty led, they're Holy Cross. So it's a great thing to do after your first year at Holy Cross. And once you do that, you'll be eager to go during your junior year. I uh, just want to close with uh, talking about the finances because this is another great reason why you should come to Holy Cross to study abroad. Study abroad at Holy Cross is designed to be as financially neutral as possible. You pay what you pay to Holy Cross and you get the same in tuition and room and board, you get the same um, financial aid that you get as if you were at Holy Cross. So institutional financial aid travels, that's the thing to look at. If you're going to other schools, see if they're institutional financial aid travels. The other thing we do is we give you a flight credit. So we pay for your flight to go. So I know no other school that does that. We have the best insurance program and risk management program in, in the country or internationally. So you're automatically insured with health insurance and stuff. So it's a network. And as again, as I said, we have people on the ground who take care of you. So Drew, if you wanna put in the chat my, uh, my email address and phone number, I'm happy to answer any questions because I've been told by Drew, who's a terrible taskmaster, that I have to be brief. So believe it or not, this is brief for me. And I'm gonna turn it over to our great students. Um, that's another reason to come to Holy Cross. You'll have really, really good students, peer students and, and, and colleagues. And the first person I'd like to, uh, to introduce is Tiffany Holland. She's from the class of 2016. She is in her last year of medical school. And I would like to ask Tiffany, what was uh, the effect or what did the effect of study abroad on your career trajectory and ability to facilitate your career? Tiffany. All right. Thank you, Britt. Thanks for having me. So yeah, like Brick said, I'm in my last year of medical school and it's really hard to quantify just the effect that study abroad had. It was just such a broad effect on my career. I mean, when I think back, the first thing I think of is that after my time at Holy Cross, I spent two years at the National Institutes of Health doing research in um, reproductive medicine. And my interest in reproductive medicine started actually by a research project I did while I was in Buenos Aires, Argentina. And um, it was pretty incredible to get the opportunity to interview at the NIH. And um, just by total coincidence, the investigator and in interviewing me actually happened to be Argentine and we hit it off right off the bat. And um, I was offered an interview on the spot while I was on the call. So um, obviously I can't say that it was just because I studied in Argentina, but you know, when you're in business, when you're in medicine, making those connections can be so important. Did we um, ask you, Tiffany, if you did your research in Spanish and if you did wrote your paper, your research in Spanish? Yeah, so um, when I went to Argentina, I would say my Spanish was not great, but with the Holy Cross program, you stay with a host family that is um, only Spanish speaking. And so you have to learn pretty fast. Otherwise you're not gonna be able to eat that night or you're gonna <laughs> um, get really lost. So yeah, you're fully immersed. And like Britt said, you're taking classes alongside Spanish speakers, which is not common. You meet students abroad when you're there and you see that they're taking English, Spanish, English classes while they're in Argentina and they don't learn nearly as well as we do. Great. Thank you so much. I just, before I turn to our next student, 
uh, Carolyn Fredericks. I just want to remind everybody to please put your questions in the chat so we have them at the end. So uh, do it now. So Carolyn Fredericks is a senior at Holy Cross. Uh, she studied intensive Spanish uh, in September uh, before going on to study for a year at uh, Mansfield College at the University of Oxford. So Carolyn, what has study, how has study abroad transformed who you are or how did it? Yeah, so first of all, congratulations to all of you who've been accepted. As someone who has to leave Holy Cross in just one short month, I'm extremely jealous of all of you. And so I had an amazing study abroad experience, and especially to go to Professor Smith's point of why study abroad at Holy Cross, the program here is really something else. I remember when I was a junior or a sophomore, just thinking about my junior year, I had studied Spanish for many years, and I had this opportunity to go to Oxford, which is the best university in the world for a year as well. And I went to Professor Smith and I said, essentially, I don't know which one I want to choose. They're both such great opportunities. And he said to me, you don't have to choose. We'll find a way for you to do both. And so that's just something that I think only Holy Cross can give you. I know so many other people who do not have the same opportunity. So I can't say enough about how much I owe this department and what they've done for me. And I think my experience abroad transformed me in a number of ways, most definitely in that it was a journey of independence and confidence. I was the only, not, the, not just the only Holy Cross person involved in my intensive three month excursion in Spain, but also the only American. So I was fully immersed in the language. All of my friends were Italian, Swedish, Russian, and they all only spoke Spanish as a way to communicate. So I was making friends. The only way I got to talk to people in class was by figuring out Spanish. So I also had that opportunity and then the intellectual challenges and stimulation of spending a year at Oxford was unparalleled. So I think that study abroad in general, it just, it made me, and I think it makes a lot of people more aware what you are capable of as a student, as a person, a friend, and just as Holy Cross would tell you as a man or woman for and with others. Great, Carolyn, thank you so much. Uh, our second and final student, I wish we had time to, to bring out a lot of them because they're all terrific people, is Daniel Tallman. Daniel uh, did something really amazing. He, uh, he learned Japanese on his own and went to Japan and studied uh, a, intensively in Japan and then went to Sophia University. So Daniel, I'm gonna ask you the same question. Uh, how has study abroad made you a different person, transformed who you are? Uh, yeah, totally. Um, and first and foremost, once again, congratulations on joining our Holy Cross family. Welcome to the Hill. And um, my time in Japan was extremely influential, not only for the time I was there and the way that I grew as a person through living with a host family, embracing a completely new culture, embracing a new language. But it also has followed me throughout my time at Holy Cross. Um, I entered Holy Cross not really sure what I wanted to do with what major I wanted to pursue or what academic like path I wanted to go down. And so when I was at, Holy, um, when I was at Sofia University in Tokyo, I was a architectural studies and international studies double major. I currently still am, but I began trying to figure out how I wanted to pursue my senior year, what topics in specific I wanted to pursue. And um, in my senior year thesis, I've been able to incorporate my time abroad into my final research. So I just finished up my, well, I didn't finish up, but I'm still working on my final thesis on um, historically gay neighborhoods in New York City and Tokyo, and in specific, the rail transit that is in both cities. So I've been working um, very closely with not only uh, Japanese sources and uh, Japanese material that I only would be able to interpret and read if I had spoken Japanese and went to Japan to learn it, but also with my connections and my friends that I built when I was in Tokyo. Um, similar to Caroline, I also, I think I was, I was one of two Holy Cross students to go to Japan in the last five or six years, so it was a relatively uh, uncharted territory, and I was like, I was surrounded by people of all different nationalities. Like I still have friends. I like to say that it, no matter where I got dropped off on the face of the earth, whatever continent I landed on, I would have a door to go to and stop off because I have friends now in Russia, Korea, uh, South Africa. So um, I have to say study abroad has been absolutely influential in my time at Holy Cross and I cannot 
um, suggest and encourage you more to endure, uh, go through a study abroad experience while you're here at the Hill. Thank you. Hey, Britt, can I jump in just real quick? I have uh, just a couple quick follow-ups. Colin, like you described these amazing experiences, Spain, England. Were you nervous? Like you, you seem like this was just something you wanted to charge into, but can you talk about the what anxiety and nervousness you felt uh, leading up to these experiences? Of course. Well, okay. Yes, obviously I was very nervous. Um, I So going into a situation, I'm going to a foreign country. I'm living with a host family that only speaks Spanish. I have a couple of upper level Holy Cross courses and four years of high school Spanish under my belt. But other than that, I'm pretty unprepared to have a full day-to-day -day routine in only Spanish. And then I come to find that all of my classmates also do not speak a word of English. So fully, I had to just really go out of my way. It's kind of reminiscent of what you all experienced during your first couple of days at Holy Cross of that pushing yourself to go talk to people that you might not feel comfortable talking to. And then realizing that, oh, everyone in this situation is feeling the exact same way as I am. So for me, it was really just pushing myself way outside my comfort zone and pushing aside all of the nerves to realize that I'm never going to have this experience again. So I'm gonna go make all of these Italian boys <laughs> that are in my class my friend and talk to this 33 year old pharmacist who moved here with her boyfriend that I had a one-on-one -on -one class with and just really go outside and go above and ab above and beyond to really try and do things that even though they definitely were not things I felt comfortable with, things that I knew that I would enjoy in the long run. Okay, Britt, I have a few questions for you from the, from the Q&A that some sure. of our um, attendees. Uh, sure. First, just very basic, what percentage of, of the student population studies abroad? Well, that's, uh, you have to say what percentage of the eligible population because uh, athletes tend not to be eligible or they're, 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 they have to practice in the off season. So uh, I'd say it tends to be about 45%, 45 to 50% of the eligible students. Okay, great. And um, when do you need to decide that? Can you just talk through the, the timeline a little bit? We have a few questions about when you decide and if you can, as a first year student, if you can start to plan out your curriculum with anticipating study abroad, can you just talk through the timeline briefly? Yeah, the, the timeline is it's, it's, it, it starts right away in this third semester. So the first semester of your, of your uh, experience. So first semester of your, of your sophomore year, that's when the application process starts. We do a, we we host a number of information sessions, uh, heavy advising sessions for students, uh, and then uh, students have the application process is usually due in November uh, for the following academic semester or year. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's that's the way it works. As students who are pre med. Um, what I would encourage you to do is as a, as a, at the end of your first year, if you can do it at the beginning if you want, but second semester of your first year, get in touch with the study abroad office and we can give you certain tips about what courses you need to take. If you are a political science major, you need to take the four foundational courses and so on. But it really gets really cranked up at the beginning of your second uh, year at Holy Cross. And I, I hope you can handle the first part of this, and I want Tiffany to handle the second part of this. Yeah. Um, lots of students, and we have a question in the Q&A about this, lots of students are interested in studying science, maybe being pre-med, think that um, they worry about their options for studying abroad, whether they'll be able to handle all their requirements, and then whether certain locations, uh, they would be restricted to studying abroad if they were on the pre-med track or a biochem major. Can you talk about that a little bit, Brett, and then maybe Tiffany, you talk about your experience? Yes, it is true that the that Holy Cross does not allow you to take your pre-health professional uh, requirements abroad. So those students who want to do the uh, be pre-med or pre-health, they should concentrate on those in their first two years. But we have lots of pre-med students, some who study abroad for the full year. One comes to mind who was at Trinity, who went on to, to, to be accepted at medical school. Michelle, she was a terrific student. So it does happen. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of urban myths out there, I will say. You can't study abroad if you're a science major. Even if a professor tells you that, don't believe it, it's just not true. 
So before you give up on study abroad, please talk to me or someone in, in the study abroad office, because with very, very, very few exceptions, you can study abroad. Tiff, do you want to add to that? Yeah, no, there's so many ways to get around it. I personally chose to take one of my science classes over the summer so I wouldn't have to double up um, in another semester, but you can always double up in a different semester and make up for it later. You could take it after graduation. Honestly, it's so worth it to study abroad that you should not let that hold you back. Thank you. Drew, I saw a question about homestays and people were, were, were concerned uh, that you, was, was that compulsory? And uh, we strongly encourage homestays in um, non-English speaking countries. Uh, there's some exceptions there. Part of the problem is that in the dorms, uh, they put the, the, um, the study abroad students in one dorm and the lingua franca, the common language becomes English. So it defeats the purpose. And I understand that people could be nervous about homestays, but they are very well chosen. We've had some of these families for 25, 30 years. Uh, they are vetted, background checks. There's all kinds of things. We have never had uh, a problem with health and safety in a, in a homestay. Uh, and I understand that's a concern, but I just ask you to trust me that it's been something that, that we have really worked hard to, to vet and we take good care of the relationships of the families. Uh, when I travel over to see, I always see the host families and, and thank them. It's, it's the real relationships that develop and you win, you get so much out of them. Uh, just the culture of eating around the table is just, you know, a, of a family is phenomenal. But anyway, I just saw that. I wanted to read, Drew, what else? That's great. I, you know, I wanted to ask Daniel, I think, Sometimes the, when I talk to Holy Cross students, one of the things they reflect on as being one of the most valuable parts of their study abroad experience is overcoming like difficult moments or a bump in the road or that first transition period. Um, can you talk about your experience? Uh, was there a moment that you thought like, geez, I don't know about this and you sort of overcame that moment and you look back upon that fondly now? Uh, definitely. Um, so a big part of my time when I was abroad was I was constantly stressing out about whether I was utilizing my time abroad correctly. So I had this preconceived notion in my head that I have a year in Japan, I have to do this, 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 and this. And, and around like the earlier parts of my time abroad, I was really starting to get nervous. And I remember it didn't really click for me, my time abroad, until I had my first like really challenging experience. I joined the Sophia University Hiking Club. And we went down, like deep down south into the bottom of Japan, past the island, like the main island, and into the island area. And we went hiking. I was the only English speaker on the trip. Everyone was a Japanese college student. So it was one of those make or break uh, moments, especially when you're hiking. Um, and it was like a really intense experience. And I was constantly like questioning myself the entire process. Like, how am I doing this? How, am, how, am, how is this happening? And then it was over. And I was like, oh. That was perfectly fine. It's something I look back on as extremely important to my development, not only as a student at Holy Cross, but as a person. And so for all those like bumps in the roads or those moments where I really didn't know if I, if I believed in myself or I was doing it correctly, like it was just growing down and really embracing any sort of cultural difference or like unknown. And that was really what brought me the, my favorite experiences was just really embracing the unknown, embracing the maybe different to your normal understanding. and pursuing it because it was amazing. That's awesome. Uh, Britt, a few rapid fire questions here about process. Does study abroad affect your GPA? Uh, no, courses taken abroad do not count towards the GPA. That being said, however, uh, a lot of places factor them in, like uh, the LSAT's Law Review Boards, they, they factor your, your abroad grades in. So uh, I have to say the grades for students who study abroad are, fair, are, are very consistent. A students here tend to be A students abroad. Uh, uh, so uh, people don't run into serious issues or problems, but no, they don't count towards the GPA. Yes, uh, they don't de jure count towards the GPA, but de facto, they do. Tiffany, was that something you worried about? Um, you know, when you were thinking down the line, you might apply to med school with study abroad, you know, hurt or maybe improve those chances? Yeah, it actually uh, raised my GPA. Uh, I was very thankful for it. And it did, in fact, um, it was included in my application. So. 
Um, and Britt, uh, we have a question here about an application process. What's it like to apply for study abroad? Well, the thing is, um, it's a very different process and it's important that students know this up front. Applying for colleges, I know you are very aware of right now, uh, applying for college is a very traumatic experience. Am I gonna get accepted? Am I gonna get financial aid? Study abroad application is, is, is very different. Uh, first of all, you've already been vetted. I mean, you've already, you've already proven yourself by being accepted at Holy Cross. You've already um, uh, done well enough to uh, be able to apply to study abroad. And third and most important, the Office of Study Abroad and the students applying to study abroad are on the same team. We're working for you. We want you to study abroad. So it doesn't mean you shouldn't take the application seriously, uh, but it's not, it's, it, 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 it's not something that should traumatize you. It's, it's, a, it's a data entry kind of thing. You have to write an essay on why you want to study abroad and you have to choose your courses. And yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's an application. We need to get letter of recommendation. We want, to, we want to get to know you. We'll interview you, not to test you, but just to find out if we think it's more like advising you than interviewing you. Okay. Caroline, I have a question for you about, you know, I think one of the things that students are hesitant about, the idea of studying abroad sometimes is they feel like they're going to be totally removed from their college friends and they're afraid maybe of being away from their family for so long. Can you talk about how you stay connected to your, your circle of family and friends? Yeah, of course. This is a great question. And one of the things that I think was contributing a lot to the nervousness that I felt in the other question, I live in a house right now with seven other roommates and we all went to different abroad destinations. We had two in Ireland, one in France, one in Australia, a couple doing field studies in Turks and Caicos. So really across the board, very different places, which means a lot of different time differences as well, I'm sure. So one of the things that we always did, and it was something that I was nervous of because most of them went for the semester, is we had FaceTime dates where we were just always trying to at least once every two weeks, make sure we were talking to each other and hearing about everything. And the thing about abroad is you have so many things to talk to your friends and family about because you're doing so many cool things every day. And my parents always joke that when I'm on the hill, like in Worcester, they don't hear from me for months at a time because I just get distracted. I'm doing work, I'm doing things with my friends. But abroad, I would call them and say, oh, well, I went to the Vatican today, or oh, I did this hike in Spain and it was fantastic. I saw this book that was, I ate in this library that this famous um, writer wrote in and all of these different things that were so cool. And so you want to tell people these things and they want to hear them. So that was something that I didn't really worry about. And even though when most of my friends went back for the second semester of Holy Cross and I was still staying abroad in Oxford, I realized that I was not that out of the loop. I knew everything that was going on with them. They knew everything going on with me. And it's a lot easier than you think it would be. I hear so often Holy Cross students talking about study abroad changing them. As you're coming to the end of your uh, last year in college now into your senior year, did, did your experience with study abroad change how you think about life after college, whether it's personally or professionally or just your perspective? That one's for me, right? Yeah, okay. go ahead, Dan. Okay, great. Yeah, um, so definitely a big part of, of course, that anxiety as you go through your four years of college is like, oh my gosh, this is ending eventually. I got to figure out what I want to do. And I think I mean, from personal experience, I know that my time in Japan is intrinsically linked to what I want to do in the future. As I mentioned before, I did my senior thesis on Tokyo and Japanese culture and Japanese urban studies. And that's kind of where I want to go in the future. And I would not have that interest in pursuing grad school in that capacity without my time abroad. Um, I think for a lot of my friends as well, like um, a lot of our postgraduate ideas, whether we applied for Fulbrights or whether we applied for teaching English in another country, it was directly based off of our study abroad experiences. So I know for myself personally, like that's definitely where I want to go in the future. But um, also additionally, like I know a lot of Holy Cross students that really feel that their study abroad time and their time post-college are linked almost directly one-to-one. -one. Just to jump on top of what Dan said, we have a wonderful uh, Fulbright uh, advisor. We have a great 
uh, track record on uh, get, and sitting getting students uh, to have Fulbrights. One year we had, I think, 19 finalists. And of the 19 uh, finalists, 16 had studied abroad. So study abroad puts you re in a really good position to get uh, postgraduate, post undergraduate fellowships. And, and it's a very important thing and is and looked upon favorably. But yeah, Drew, you had a question? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm curious just to hear your thoughts on how, how you think or how you don't think study abroad in general might change because of the current pandemic. Um, do you think it'll change going forward? Uh, I hope it goes back to what it was and not, you know, uh, and uh, I, no, I'll just answer, you, you know, I don't think it'll change. I mean, we, we all have tools that we've used. You ask about communicating. One of the silver linings of, 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 the, of the pandemic is we're all much better at communicating with each other than we are not in the same room or the same uh, campus or whatnot. So I think communication will be different and, and, and enhanced. Uh, our goal is to get students abroad and to have them drill down into the culture they're in and that's not gonna change. That's, that's, that's really, really what we do, so. Got a question for you from the, the Q&A. Are you able to study in more than one country? Yes. Different semesters. Yes, you, you can. In fact, we have a, a classics majors often go to Athens for the first semester and following Virgil from uh, Greece, they, they go from into to Italy. So they spend a, a semester in Athens and a semester in, um, in Rome. Uh, but you can do any two programs as long as the scheduling works out. So programs in the Southern Hemisphere have a little different schedules, but as long as the schedule, and you get two flight credits too, by the way. So that's, that's, that's pretty good too, so. Um, so I've got one or two more questions. So sure, I'm, gonna invite, I'm gonna invite our attendees to, to put any last questions in the Q&A and we'll see if we can get to them before we wrap up. Um, let me start with you, Dan. Can you talk about um, a small moment while you were studying abroad um, something um, not in a classroom, something maybe with a friend or um, with a classmate or with some way in which you interacted that, that you, you think about, you look back upon fondly, um, something that really sort of typified that study abroad experience that wouldn't show up on a fancy video but was meaningful to you. Yeah, um, I think back a lot about the friends I made at study abroad and I touched a bit about how we were all from different areas, but um, the SOFIA uh, program ends around late August, so they have a really long spring break, but your, your spring semester kind of goes into summer. And so in Japan, fireworks ceremonies are a really big thing in the years of July, uh, months of July and August. And so after we finished our final for Japanese class, we all got together and had a big picnic on the banks of this river near Tokyo. And we're able to watch this big firework show um, out near Tokyo Sky Tree, which is this, this big kind of um, uh, like Seattle uh, needle kind of looking building. And I just remember sitting around a blanket and it was my friends from Italy, Russia, Korea, my American friend, my Norwegian friend. And it just was like this very important moment of like all these different nationalities coming together and a very like almost like cinematic way to end my time abroad that really lasts with me and really I'm able to like cherish like now I went abroad in 2018, 2019. So almost like two years since then, it still is very nice in my heart. Awesome image. Um, I'm certainly not looking for you to top of that, but do you have a moment that you reflect fondly about? Um, well, I'm going to do two then because I have Spain and Oxford, so not sure you up, Daniel, but I'll try. Um, so my moment for Spain would definitely have to be when um, the Holy Cross program for Leon Spain runs through about September through the academic year. And I left Spain at the end of August, just when everyone was getting there. So there were three girls who were coming to spend their year in, abroad in Spain. And I got to go there and show them around. And I was in this program with a lot of international students already. And Holy Cross runs its own program. So one of my little moments would definitely have to be when we were walking around past the main street of restaurants and bars and the big cathedral is there. And the girls looked at me from Holy Cross and they go, how do you know so many people here? And I thought, yes, I've made it. That's it. That's me in Spain. That's all I could ask for. And then for Oxford, it would definitely just have to be the little moments walking by the Bodleian Library and all of these 
incredible buildings, knowing that this is where prime ministers and famous authors and statesmen have studied and been there and some of the smartest minds in the world have been in the same place that I have been. So that was just an incredible experience as well. Great. I'm going to give you the floor one last time. You were so good at keeping the time early on that I'm going to grant you some bonus time. Oh, good. Uh, well, I just want to just say, believe what you see. Uh, believe these students. Uh, they are they are great, and they had fabulous experiences. Uh, and it's typical of what happens. I mean, they so believe what you see. It really works. It's real, um, and. You know, you got a lot of committed people in the office. Uh, you have um, three PhDs and one master's uh, director at the director level. We care about your education. We care about you as students and about your children. Uh, we try to work with them as adults, but understanding that this is a big step to take. So we try to want to be with them the whole way that, that they're needed. Uh, so it's a very caring, if you've heard the expression, uh, cure of personalis, cure of the, uh, care of the whole person, that extends to our study abroad programs and to the people we hire overseas. Uh, I could give you example after example of how caring and, 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 and really loving our, our personnel. And even for those of you who have anxiety about host families, for the most part, our host families too. So it's an engaged uh, office that cares about students. The programs are tried and true and tested. Uh, they are sound academically uh, and it's just a fantastic experience. So, and I will just say again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to be in touch with me directly. Thank you for coming tonight, all students and parents. I'm going to uh, encourage all of our attendees um, to um, come to our final webinar as well. Um, we're putting the link in the chat for you right now to register for our final webinar uh, on Sunday called The Power of Purple about the Holy Cross Alumni Network. Um, thank you again for coming tonight. Thank you to all of our attendees. Your stories really help um, illustrate the power of the study abroad experience at Holy Cross. Um, uh, thanks for everybody for coming tonight. Stay safe, stay sane, and stay in touch. Good night.